What does the output of a photomultiplier look like? Trace 3, the orange trace of this oscilloscope display at 5 nanoseconds per centimeter shows the output of an R7400 series Hamamatsu metal can photomultiplier tube into 50 ohms. Trace 1, the white trace, and trace 2, the green trace, are the outputs of a limiting amplifier discriminator. This detects the photon and converts it to a constant height. Notice that the triggering amplitude is at 50 millivolts negative for the photomultiplier output trace. Here are more details. The output of the photomultiplier goes through a small amplifier which is then split by an additive Hewlett Packer device which then is fed into the uh, oscilloscope and into the out into the input of the uh, Marina Photonics Limiting Amplifier. The output of the photomultiplier is not constant. The output of the amplifier discriminator is constant. If I change the triggering level to minus 100 millivolts, then I still see the same output amplitude from the limiting amplifier. Occasionally ringing will cause a multiple pulse on the output of the limiting amplifier, but you can adjust the gain of the limiting amplifier so that those are minimized. Let me change the gain of trace 3, which is the photomultiplier output, from, 500 millil uh, from 50 millivolts to 200 millivolts. The trigger level is still the same. And now I'm going to lower threshold to about 200 millivolts. This illustrates the fact that there's a Poisson distribution amplitude from the output of the photomultiplier. That is, a single photoelectron produces a plethora of amplitudes which are not constant for this type of electron multiplier photomultiplier tube. We'll take the gain down to, I mean, the threshold down to um, 400 millivolts, and we still see some traces occasionally, and occasionally a little bit of after pulse or pulse width increase caused by ringing on the photomultiplier tube. Actually the cleanness of this photomultiplier tube output is remarkable, but it still has all the weaknesses of standard photomultiplier tube, which include a little bit of ringing which causes a false after pulse. Occasional pulses seen here are normal pulses caused by the photomultiplier output. A little bit of light is leaking into the tube. This is at 5 nanoseconds per centimeter. I'm going to change the time scale to 10 nanoseconds per centimeter and now 20 nanoseconds per centimeter. The probability of seeing another photon is fairly low, but occasionally we do see another photon come out and the amplifier discriminator follows this quite reasonably. At 2 nanoseconds per centimeter one can see the output pulse width is about three, three and a half nanoseconds on the discriminator. And so I'm going to take this back down to a reasonable level for a normal photon of about 50 millivolts. I'll change the gain to be a little bit more reasonable back to 50 millivolts. And now I'm going to change the gain of the limiting amplifier. This will cause the pulse width output to diminish a little bit. So you can see the output pulse width becomes narrower. When I increase the gain, many more pulses come out. And if the gain is too high, you get false pulses, such as this. So this is why it's nice to be able to change the gain of the amplifier to look only at pulses that you want to look at at a certain threshold. 
the reason that the output pulse width of the limiting amplifier is not fixed like it is with some other discriminators at 10 nanoseconds is it allows one to see a second pulse which might occur within 10 nanoseconds. Occasionally there will be a second pulse as you have just seen that occurs within 10 nanoseconds of the first one. If that's the case then you would totally miss this if the pulse width were fixed at 10 nanoseconds. Also having a variable pulse width which is proportional to the amplitude of the photomultiplier output will allow further processing. Once again this is a uh, 3 gigahertz oscilloscope and right now we're at 5 giga samples per second so we're faithfully reproducing the signals. Now I'm at 10 giga samples per second and 5 nanoseconds per centimeter and once again you can see the variable pulse height from the photomultiplier. Threshold is at 52 millivolts negative. Go down to 25 and you see a much higher count rate. If we go down to 200 and roughly minus 250 millivolts, you still see occasional pulses and one can observe the little glitch on the output of the uh, uh, amplifier discriminator which is caused by ringing in the photomultiplier too.